can gamma ray bursts and magnetars wipe out the entire life from the earth that's a good question so let's first discuss what gamma ray bursts are what are magnetars so a magnetar is in it's it's a neutron star that has an extremely powerful magnetic field what's a neutron star a neutron star is the collapsed stellar core of a super giant star that went supernova and uh, it the the parent star typically has a mass of about 10 to 25 solar masses and the neutron star typically has a mass of about 1.4 solar masses and a radius of about 10 kilometers so it's an extremely dense extremely compact object and a magnetar is a highly magnetized neutron star it has an extremely powerful neutro, um, magnetic field typically about a hundred million times the strength of the most powerful man-made uh, artificial magnet so that's what a magnetar is now are magnetars responsible for gamma ray bursts not really those are not the real pre, pre uh, progenitors of gamma ray bursts so let's go into what is a gamma ray burst a gamma ray burst is the are gamma ray bursts are some of the most energetic events in the entire universe so it's a very powerful flash of light mostly gamma rays and the luminosity, the light, the amount of light that is emitted, so it emits about in it emits in just about ten seconds or so more light than the entire sun will emit during its entire lifetime. So that's how incredibly energetic a gamma ray burst is. So typically there are three different kinds of gamma ray bursts: very short duration gamma ray, gamma ray bursts, typically of the order of milliseconds. Then there are medium to long duration gamma ray bursts from uh, about a second to about 10 seconds to maybe 100 seconds. And then there are longer duration gamma ray bursts. So the ones we are talking about, the vast majority of gamma ray bursts are these uh, short duration to medium duration ones, about 10 seconds or so long, approximately 10 to 100 seconds, typically 10 seconds or so. So how are these gamma ray bursts uh, formed? What or What is the origin? Typically, it's the supernova explosion. Of, uh, of a of a supergiant star, so that's typically what gives rise to these gamma ray bursts that uh, that are of the order of ten seconds long. And when a star like this goes supernova, it emits these uh, these beams of light. So let me show you what it looks like. Uh, so this is an artist's representation of a gamma ray burst. It is a star that has gone supernova, and it's emitting two beams. Of radiation in opposite directions it's aligned along the axis of rotation of the star so that's what it typically looks like these are extremely energetic beams of radiation uh, it contains all kinds of radiation but typically the most powerful uh, the si most significant component is gamma rays the explosion also gives off lots of neutrinos and things but these two collimated beams of of radiation are mostly composed of gamma rays so let's go into what are gamma rays so gamma rays are the most energetic uh, elect uh, form of electromagnetic radiation. It's a penetrating kind of electromagnetic radiation. Uh, a gamma ray typically has uh, millions of, uh, possibly millions of times more energy than visible light. And its wavelength is extremely short. So the consequence of this is that you cannot reflect gamma rays of mirrors. The wavelength is so short that it goes right through mirrors. It goes right through living tissue and it can cause a great deal of radiation damage to, to living tissues, which is why these are extremely hazardous uh, uh, light rays. So these are invisible, obviously, and uh, they can cause a lot of damage. Typically, you need to shield yourself from gamma rays using something like lead, which is very thick and which has a great uh, amount of density. So gamma rays are on Earth emitted from various radiation processes from the from the uh, radioactive decay of atomic nuclei, etc. And that's what you find in nuclear reactors. So that's why you need all this radiation shielding. So it's very dangerous to human beings. It can cause uh, damage to your DNA, to your bone marrow, to internal organs. So that's why it's very hazardous. So this uh, event, so how was it discovered? So in the 1960s, the Americans sent up satellites uh, in Earth orbit, and the purpose of the satellites, the VLA satellites, was to detect uh, nuclear tests anywhere on the planet. So a nuclear test usually has a very typical signature. It's a double flash signature. 
it's a very powerful initial flash of light then it is followed by a slower and and uh, increase gradually increasing uh, afterglow of, uh, of radiation so it's a very interesting very typical double flash event so that's what these uh, satellites the vela satellites were designed to detect and they were equipped with uh, with x ray detectors gamma ray de detectors and other such instruments so what these instruments uh, what these satellites found was they found strange flashes of gamma rays strange gamma ray bursts coming from outer space and there was no possible there was no explanation for that at the time and this was a classified uh, uh, deal these satellites were classified their data was classified so it was not revealed to the scientific world until the mid or early 1970s by which time it was found that these events happen from time to time in outer space eventually it was detected these, that these are extra galactic events these are, events don't happen in the milky way they they occur very very far away in far off galaxies and their distribution is isotropic which means it doesn't come from any particular direction in space it's spread all over so now we have a better understanding the gamma ray bursts we are referring to the short to medium duration ones uh, they are uh, they originate in these supernova explosions of uh, uh, of these super giant stars so there are two beams of light so if the earth were to come in the path of one of these beams it could affect the earth if the gamma ray burst was nearby maybe within uh, a thousand light years or so or maybe less so if it is at a reasonable distance from the earth it can definitely uh, cause uh, cause some changes on the earth the first thing is if a gamma ray burst were to hit the earth straight on one of the beams then within seconds it will destroy a significant portion of the ozone layer of the earth so at least half of the ozone layer will be gone within seconds and it will not affect uh, the surface it will not have an effect on the surface of the earth directly or immediately but it will wipe out significant portions of the ozone layer and uh, that will cause a great influx of ultraviolet radiation on the surface of the planet which will have dangerous and bad effects on life on life on the earth and also the uh, destruction of the ozone will also have a different effect in the chemistry of the atmosphere it will react with nitrogen it will cause it will uh, create nitrous oxides and dioxides which are gases that have a long term cooling effect because they they produce a kind of smog that covers the planet so you could have a kind of uh, uh, an induced winter the kind of winter you have after after an asteroid impact event that sort of thing so it will have long term effects it won't have immediate effects on uh, on life but it could possibly and conceivably cause a mass extinction event of some type so it is believed that some mass extinctions in the past may have possibly been triggered off by a gamma ray burst event so that is the answer it can possibly affect life on earth but most likely such a gamma ray burst would have to be directly aimed at the earth which would be a very well it would be just bad luck if that would happen and it would need to be somewhere within our own galaxy because it needs to be close by for the uh, intensity of the beam to be to be significant enough to cause all this damage so yes possibly it can uh, it, it definitely has the potential to cause significant damage to the earth i don't think it can wipe out the entire life of the earth but it can certainly trigger off uh, an extinction event on some scale